more night This life's got a hold on me I step away from the light The dark's more for us what you can see This is where you make everything count and the culmination of what has been a grueling season comes to a close. You have to deal with the different properties today from asphalt to concrete. You have to deal with how close the racing is going to be and this of course for your wonderful Skip Barber Formula iRacing series. This is where you try and book a seat. I'm Jake Sperry, Peter Mackay along with me for the ride and Peter you know we've been talking about this all season it's back to back it's always tough and close racing and this has been about who can keep their head above water this has been a sink or swim season. That it has Mikel Gada really has been the star of the show he's just had that little bit of an edge over everybody throughout the season and that's really shown uh, and he's a fully deserving champion. However, there is a lot still to hand out tonight and of course a, ha a half season in the championship and a, a single race in the championship as well. The race in the Skip Barber series in the real world is a huge opportunity and has seen so many drivers take the first step on a career to the very top motor race. It absolutely has. And let's get a look at what the entails are when it comes to all of the work that has been done to put together one of the most lucrative combined prize pools 
in sim racing history. A combined prize pool of 500,000 US dollars. First prize in every race, or first place in every race, gets $1,000 worth of credit to the Skip Barber Racing School. And a hard charger, whoever gains the most positions, gains one day's worth of Skip Barber Racing School. All of the top three will get five days of competition licensing at the race school, along with Skip Barber Racing School coaching. But the difference is, is full, half, one, first, second, third. Here are the points. No drop rounds put in here. This is your total overall. Mikel Garda has convinced everybody of how good he is. Five race wins this season. He has won the championship outright, but it is a three car scrap for second, third and fourth positions. And only two can get those final places. Peter, Elvis Rankin, Nicholas Mateo. Janny's out of it with his points. So Deegan Fairclough has an outside shot. Yeah, we'll see how they go today. I mean, Dagan Fairclough in particular has put in some great performances in the races. He's not qualified as well as he maybe should do, but if anything, that should have been able, has allowed him to showcase his ability to cut through the pack with skill. You can see just how many drivers have got themselves through the hot laps, through the time trials every single week. 36 drivers over the course of six weeks worth of racing. I think it's absolutely fantastic, but talk ourselves around then this circuit what does this track mean one of the few aerodromes turned into a racetrack oh it's just uh, it's, it's so important in american motor racing history they've been racing here since 1950 and the iconic sebring 12 hour endurance race has been running since 1952 and you know it isn't a circuit as well known for single seater competition in racing however very important for testing and if you want to shine if you want that big indy car shot oh well, you better be quick at sebring because that's where a lot of the teams come to test absolutely and this is effectively a battleground and here are the rules of the battles that we will be seeing today they'll all be driving the brand new iRacing Formula IR04 released in the latest build of iRacing. A fixed setup. Everyone has the same equipment. You can't say my setup's better than anybody else. They get one lap of lone qualifying. And here's the big one. Race one, 15 minutes long. It sets the grid for race two, wherever you finish in race one. And another 15 minutes in race number two to finish out a 12 race, six week season. But to get a little bit more of an understanding of how this Sebring track works, Peter, you've had a little look at Matt Busa as he's gone around this circuit. Yeah, Matt Busa, best taxi driver in the world. He's going to take us on a run here around the iconic Sebring International Raceway into turn one, a super quick corner. Marco Andretti used to be absolutely flat here in the Acura LMP2 car many moons ago. Matt Busa using all the all the track and more then into turn three. That's Christensen corner named after Tom Christensen who won the Sebring 12 hour six times. Then it's this very tight left-hander and up towards Gurney Bend underneath the bridge then and down towards turn seven, the hairpin. This is where in 1957, Sterling Moss, while leaving the race, was given a bottle of Coca-Cola finished it on the next lap and then threw it back to the photographer that gave it to him. So cool, so Sterling Moss. Round there, then up towards the whoop, up towards the Fangio chicane with a little bit of oversteer there as well. And then the charge towards Cunningham Corner, named after Briggs Cunningham, who really was the first top endurance racer from the United States. A nice, tricky corner here, hard on the brakes, get all your braking done and then tuck it in there for the run through Collier Curve. And then up towards tower turn. Tower turn's a really, really difficult corner. You're braking and turning at the same time, so you're trying to scrub the speed off, clip the apex, but not too much. Don't hit that curb. Then along the Flying Fortress Strait, named after the type of aircraft that used to be housed here uh, before. Then we run through towards Jean de Bien Bend, really fast here, especially in this high downforce Formula IR44 machine through Olivier Jean de Bien Bend, a very successful driver here. Then it's the Le Mans curve and onto the Almond Strait. Alec Almond was really the visionary behind Sebring Raceway and the Sebring 12 hour race and why America has such a strong sports car heritage and what a, what a place to be named after Alec Ullman. Then it's into Sunset Bend, the most tricky corner on the circuit. Blind entry here, almost clipping the wall there, trying to keep it nice and tight and watch out for the bumps. The car's getting pulled around all over the place. You're trying to get the car, get the power down and then run to the flag. Putting in a clean lap at Sebring, almost impossible, but that's why we love it. Well, almost impossible, but you can see just how much he had to fight for everything. This is how the grid will look though for race one of two of this finale. It is Elvis Rankin 
on the pole position and he will have the champion alongside Mikel Garda there in second. Pierre Francesco Patricolo, career best qualifying for him. He'll start from third with Michael Janney in fourth position. Matt Busa will start fifth. We saw there Matt Adams in sixth, Deegan Fairclough and Nicholas Matteo on row number four, row five, holding Zach Holden and Tyler Campbell. Ross Banfield will roll off from 11th with Jordan Johnson on the outside of row six. Then it's Michael Romanidis and Jean Boutefour. Guillaume Levesque will start on the inside of row eight alongside Felipe Cabrera Loyola. Then it's Theodore Burns and Jack Harrison. And last two, Matthew Zeiss and Simon Demore will start on the back row of the grid, row 10. That's really interesting actually looking at that qualifying piece because only 12 drivers were able to set a lap time out there today and because this is the final round and the top three or four drivers are only fighting for those big prizes at the top, what's there to win for the other drivers? A lot of drivers would have decided not to qualify so they have as good of a chance as possible today to become the hard charger. You know what? It shows you that I'm not a good tactician. I I'd never thought of that, uh, Jake. That's a that's an excellent idea. So yes, I do think that's uh, a little bit part of it. You know, it, it could also be you know some drivers just not quite threading the eye of the needle in qualifying. They only get one lap, and it's so easy to just drop a wheel over a curb and you get a track limit violation and the lap's done. But yes, I think you're spot on there. Good spot. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of drivers wanting to get those hard charger points. Track temperature about 101 degrees. Fahrenheit here in Florida and uh, on the track and I wouldn't think that's excessively high uh, Jake I think I wouldn't want it to get any higher but uh, the drivers should be fairly comfortable and familiar with that uh, track condition I certainly would say so I'd say even it might be a little bit on the milder side for Florida out there oh Elvis Rankin going <laughs> slow and Pierre Francesco Patricolo I think it was there almost ran straight up into the back of him there Wow, well, drama before the green flags even dropped. And uh, yeah, the drivers, as you can see, are furiously weaving the tires back and forward, trying to generate vital temperature. You'll also see them aggressively uh, accelerating and aggressively braking. What that does is generate heat in the brakes, and which therefore radiates into the rim and the tire. So that's what the drivers are doing. And it just seemed that, uh, well, Elvis was one on the, on the kind of braking stage and uh, Pierre Francesco was on the acceleration stage and we nearly had drama well, we did have drama, but we nearly had a disaster early on. And there's a very vivid explanation, very vivid show of uh, just how violent it is there. Absolutely. You can see just how much work they're going through. That's Tyler Campbell there on screen trying to get himself through and trying to warm up the tyres. Look at how much work is being put in to that steering wheel. And that is just how everyone wants to get themselves up to a limit because Peter, when it came to those qualification laps they were doing, they were doing 15, 20 lap stints trying to get heat into the tires to get everything sorted. Yeah, it's quite incredible. I mean, this uh, from the IRO4, it's only 570 kilograms. It's a very, very light car. And uh, yeah, trying to generate that temperature, you need the corner speed, you need the heavy braking zones. and. That's where, yeah, that, who's going to manage that the best is going to be really important to how we end up today. But uh, Elvis Rankin in the, the number four, he wants to make sure he gets that half season uh, and finish second in the championship because, of course, based in the United States, it's, he's got a great opportunity, if he can do that, to put himself in the shop window and get onto the single-seater racing ladder because that is what he wants to do. Absolutely. In terms of what is needed today, Elvis Rankin just needs a win. And he confirms second position for Nicholas Matteo. He just needs a win and he will confirm third. He starts from eighth position on the grid as they will run themselves through the corner of a thousand and four lines. Sunset Bend looking to gear themselves up. Rankin waiting as long as he possibly dares before they go. Pace car already into the pit. 15 minutes and he's already got the jump. Green flag and we are underway here from Sebring and look at how they fan out trying to go through immediately it's Michael Janney trying to attack for second position you can see the glint of the sun as they run in towards turn number one one car already slow off in the background three wide in the middle as they charge through and somehow they're going to have to sort themselves out here and on the inside up into Christensen corner has already driven behind that's Patrick Colo who's gone around 
Oh, and Patrick Cole is spinning right onto the racing line as well. I think that will have taken a few drivers along with him. And indeed, it has thinned the field out, but we'll see what happens as they get through here as well. We'll look back at it. But the number four, Elvis Rankin, a superb start as he heads down towards turn seven with Mikel Gada in hot pursuit. Mikel Gada can be completely relaxed here. He can just go for another couple of race wins and look forward to his season in the Skip Barber series. Oh, Michael Janney is not happy either after what happened because he's got a slow down penalty right now and he's trying to serve it best he can. Worst place is lap one, trying to go the long way around him. That's Deegan Fairclough who was trying, but look at this here in the middle. Deegan Fairclough going around and look at Janney. He is desperately trying to serve this all down. He's even taken a cone with him for a little bit of trouble and he's really not happy about that because he's so high up in the championship order right now here, Peter. Oh, that's so frustrating for that to happen. Of course, the iRacing system, super clever. If it deems that you've cut the track, it will give you a time penalty that you have to serve. You effectively have to go slow until it deems that you have served that penalty and then you get back to racing speed again. And it is so, it's so frustrating when it happens, but it is there for a reason. Um, Elvis Rankin, perfect start to the race, getting it away nice and it got a gap of 1.2 seconds as he heads onto the Almond Straight. But now we'll see the effect of the slipstream and Gada begin to just grab, just as if he's pulling a tug rope, just, just getting closer and closer along the straight. Four retirees then already in the opening race, in the opening lap here of these 15 minutes. Look at them funnel in as they go through. This is the battle with Michael Janney right now. You've got Banfield there, Burtiford's in there, Guillaume Levesque. In his first start, little bit of a wiggle there, as you can see, moving through Sunset Bend, looking to put the power down. Jack Harrison on the back of that mid-pack scrap as well. As they run through, here's a little look to the inside from Banfield, looking to get this move done for seventh position. And he will just about get it. Janny in the grass there on the outside. He has a little wiggle, holds it together, and tries the outside line again. Three, four, five, one of the toughest sections of this circuit. And Janny trying to use the power on the outside of five. Give yourself just enough room. They interlock wheels for a moment, but that is the pass score. Wow, that is incredible stuff there from Michael Janney. He really, I really didn't think he could hang on to that position, but he toughed it out. He is fighting like a lion here to maintain that position and holds that tight line into the hairpin. You can do that. You can run a very tight line there, a very defensive line, and still come out on top. But now he's got a queue of drivers behind him, led by Boutifour in the red uh, haloed number 20 car. Then is Guillaume Levesque with the blue helmet and halo. And it gets again, Janney goes defensive, they are into Cunningham Corner, and that's where you can't get away with it. And you can see, look at this from Budafor in the number 20. And whoa, what a move around the outside. But Gianni's going to fight back into tower. And oh, a little bit of, oh, Gianni just having to break that a little bit too late. And his race has gone from bad to a lot worse. Not ideal in the circumstances. No. And they still continue down the Flying Fortress straight to Gen de Bien Corner and trying to figure out which way they go. It is finally a move through. That's Guillaume Levesque now leading the train there in seventh position as they go through. Let's take a look, though, at what happened on the opening lap, then, of this race and just how frantic it is. Keep an eye out there. In the middle, you can see this is what gets important. Trying to defend there. That's the 19 of Mateo trying to find a way through. He takes a tap from behind. He somehow avoids it, but then it all just bottles up around Jack Harrison and then you get yourself that sort of moment where it all just congests together and there isn't much you can do in towards turn three when you have such a wide front stretch and towards turn three it is very much running the old service roads at the airfield and it, yeah it's one line through through turn three and four i would say um through christensen corner so yeah very easy now was that fair cloth clipping the back of pierre francesco patricolo 19 clipping the seven uh, I would say so, yes. So yes. that would no Egan Fairclough needs to be as calm as possible, but here's the battle still on. 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th on back at this moment in time, running down towards the hairpin. Butterfoot throwing the... Not quite less than 10 minutes to go here in this race. And it's Elvis Rankin who leads by a slither. Less than a hundredth of a second at the front of the field. So maybe we will see a lead change shortly because Elvis Rankin's under a lot of pressure. Oh no, to spin there for the 20 of Butifur and then Cabrera. 
I think it was Cabrera Loyal. No, the booty floor spun there, and a driver collected him on the way through. I think it might have been Campbell, but uh, oh dear me, the driver's really getting put under the cosh here. Maybe struggling with that tire temperature, like we thought. Back of the front, it's Elvis Harkin from Mikhail Gada with Deegan Fairclough in third. Now, can Deegan Fairclough get a race win here in this championship? He's had such good race pace, but qualifying's been his Achilles heel. Can he put that right today? As well, this is a proper bun fight going on here for eighth position with Jean Boutefour holding off Felipe Cabrera Loyola. Then it's the number 12, the green. Uh, liberated machine of Ross Banfield as they head into Sunset Bend. Whoa. Harrison there just behind in the mid pack strap at this moment. It is also going on. There has been a change for the lead. Mikel Garda now has control of that, but look at how much they're defending here. Cabrera Loyola right on the inside. Watch the swoop on the outside from Matthew Zeiss. He's going to try and find himself a way through. They're going to funnel back out then to two wide as they run in towards turn three. That Christensen corner once again. Zeiss on the outside. Might have a chance here at five, but gets very, very tentative through that section. And Cabrera Loyola effectively defending two lines with one car had a very high rate of attrition here just seven minutes of racing we already have in who have, drivers who have been to pit lane tyler campbell pierre francesco patricolo and zach holden they have come out of pit lane now drivers who are either still in pit lane or are out of the race completely michael Janney, gordon jordan johnson michael romanides theodore burns and simon de moria huge amount of attrition early on but well that's zebra that is Sebring, and it has been Sebring for the longest time, as you can see, side by side, in towards that Cunningham corner. Zeiss and Harrison and Cabrera Loyola again being resolute on that defence, trying to go the long way around here through Collier and over towards the tower corner. It's a very inviting entrance. It takes forever to reach the apex, and then you attack off at the exit, and Cabrera Loyola doing just enough in this three-car scrap at the moment, but you look a little bit to where they are really going almost three wide as they go towards Gendebien. They are really desperate for every position they can get. And the hardest charger at this moment in time is Matthew Zeiss. He is up eight spots at the moment and he is tied with Guillaume Levesque at this stage. Brilliant stuff there um, with for our hard charger, Matthew Zeiss. Maybe he can get a few more spots because there's only a couple of drivers uh, very close in front of him where he'll be able to make up positions possibly. But six minutes and 40 seconds to go. Deegan Fairclough just starting to drop off the scent now of our leaders, Mikel Gada and Elvis Franken. But if they start fighting, you can be sure that, uh, well, he'll be right on top of them as well as this dice. Oh, are we going to split three wide, fanning out, going in to turn one? Wah, not quite. Not quite. They all get through nice and clean. As uh, Matthew Zeiss has to give best to the 17th of, of Cabrera Loyola and the number six of Harrison. And with Harrison moving up then into 10th place, he also gains with the hard chargers. There's your top two, Mikel Garda and Elvis Rankin. Now remember, Elvis Rankin with a third place or a, a win here today is going to guarantee himself second. There is Garda who leads, but look who's behind in third and fourth. It's Deegan Fairclough and Matt Adams and they're only 2.2 seconds or 1.7 can get themselves so the, the number 19 Dagan Fairclough under huge pressure here then from Matt Adams the man from Horley in the United Kingdom and uh, all that pressure is allowing Garda and Rankin to break away at the front we will be oh it's going to be tight actually I think we're going to be three to go when we get to the line uh, it's going to be close. We'll keep a close eye on that one as they swoop through Jean de Bien Bend and then towards Le Mans Curve. Very important if you want to set a light, a move up along the Altman Strait and then down into Sunset Bend. As, oh, it's starting. It started at the front. Gada and Rankin, the games have begun. Yeah, they are playing those games. They are really, really trying as they fight around in towards Sunset once again. Fairclough there in third. We are into now the final five minutes of this race and they know that they will have themselves the longest three laps as they go forward. They know that this is going to be so, so difficult 
as they run in towards this section because this is such a long lap. You have to be patient around a lap like this. And as you're trying to break away, with you're within three tenths, four tenths, there's no point in trying to serpentine away. Six, seven tenths of a second, you really have those chances and you have that opportunity just to walk away. Well, Mikel Gada, he looks to have broken the resolve a little bit there of Elvis Rankin. We saw Gada weaving around, trying to break the slipstream back to Elvis Rankin as they head down towards turn seven. So Rankin has got to, if he wants to win this race, he's really got to push and try and get back on the case of Gada. Meanwhile, Deegan Fairclough well, trying to hold off Matt the charging Matt Adams. But Fairclough, we've seen so far this season, haven't we, Jake? His racecraft, well, it's arguably some of the best, if not the best, in the championship. Oh, it has been. And it really has shown with the way that he can master his way through packs. He has been a very, very capable driver. And you can see, just looking behind, at Matt Adams, who has been a very patient driver, has got one win in this series, managed to get that at Watkins Glen through probably some of the closest, the most competitive sim racing I have ever seen in my professional career. And now you start wondering here with Deegan Feck up there, just behind as well, we've got other battles here. Matt Busa in the 13 machine. He's dealing with Guillaume Levesque, of course, who is really racing hard for that hard charger. And we know Levesque, he only needs one place on Busa, who is sliding about like nobody's business here as he moves through Jean de Bien into the Olman straight right now. Yeah, Guillaume Lebec, the Quebecois driver, really putting under pressure here. Ah, it's brilliant, brilliant to see. What a great way to make your debut. Come in in the last round and really show, uh, really make a charge up, fighting for the top six here. There he is. Very focused indeed is the Canadian driver. And oh, there he goes. Oh, that's, oh. he's going to need all that focus. And there you go. Barely well, even blinks. to avoid the contact, but look at this. Here comes the next pack. Butterfur is going to charge through, and I think Ross Banfield as well, so he did everything right. Someone going in the grass there on the outside in the background as well, but that is the worst feeling for Guillaume Levesque. He did everything right, got out of the way of the incident, and he still lost a place. At least he didn't lose the race completely, because honestly, most us mere mortals would have ploughed straight into Matt Busa there, but his presence of mind to avoid that incident was incredible he's still got he's gonna have another lap after this one we'll hopefully be able to try and recover the, the, the lost ground but he's still in the game he's still got on the panels in the car but wowee was that a close one it absolutely was you've got though your top two still nose to tail Mikel Garda and Elvis Rankin Rankin knows he will confirm half a season in the Skip Barber Formula Series if he can find himself victory over Garda in this race. Doesn't matter where. So it's going to be one lap to go after this one. Penultimate lap on track here. Mikel Garda, he already has the championship in the bag. He's not the man under pressure. He knows he's got his full season berth in the Skip Barber Racing School secure. Whereas... Uh, Elvis Rankin, he has got to finish second in this championship. That's the position he holds right now, and this position would put him in a really good place for that. And Gada, oh, Gada is playing big games here as well. You really shouldn't necessarily be moving around as much as that, but Rankin, he's not phased. He's saying, you, wherever you go, I am going to shadow you. As they come, they're going to take the white flag this time by. Is Elvis Rankin going to go this? Does he want to get this secure now? Is second place secure now? Or will he follow Gada home? and just accept it and put himself in a strong position where he just needs to finish in race two. Well, he's a racer. It's pretty difficult to switch that instinct off as they head down into turn one for the final time in this race. But do not go anywhere. We've got another 15-minute race coming up here on iRacing. And, well, if you want to get involved here on the iRacing platform, have races like this, well, you can do so as well. Sign up. We've got 40% off new memberships at the moment as well and it's just the easiest way to get involved in competitive motorsport and look at this competitive motorsport here Gada versus Rankin it's been the story of the season really Jake it's, oh I thought Rankin was going to have a look there so as well he's really trying everything he possibly can give himself that room give himself that drive and now as he puts the power down has he got an angle here he'll be on the outside of cunningham corner as he tries to get this sorted has he done enough no not yet but he's got to be patient here through the back half of this track 
Yeah, it definitely does, Jake. There's a lot of places at Sebring where it's sort of a half chance to pass and it can end up in tears. And Gara going to defend it. Tower and oh! Rankin just almost goes for the switchback, selling the dummy, but Gara sees it coming. I think this is going to come right down to Sunset Bend as they head up towards Bishop Bend for the final time. Rankin is right on the gearbox of his big Danish rival. He would love to get this battle, to get one over on Gada this time. Yeah, but here's the key. Mikel Gada through this section gives himself about a half a car length here. That gap between them, a car length and a half. And now as you get through the draft and you start the serpentine, you've got to chase it. Left, right, left, right. Unfazed is Mikel Gada moving over right over to the right-hand side of the circuit. And he may have just covered it off into Sunset Bend. He'll look anyway here, Will Elvis Rankin. He'll dive up the inside. Get together, they get together! Oh my goodness, top two in the wall! And suddenly Deegan Fairclough's hopes of a top three are alive as he rounds the final corner of Bradbury as he wins it here at Sebring race one. Deegan Fairclough's facial expression there. Well, I don't think you can quite believe it. He's like, I've won. Oh my word, Elvis Rankin, that incident, uh, uh, that could come back to haunt him. I do not mean just for the context of this championship. There is too much on the line here to take on moves like that. There was very little to gain, a whole lot to lose, and Elvis Rankin has just lost a hell of a lot there. He absolutely has. What a manic finish here. Deegan Fairclough. Picking up the victory then by default. 16 minutes, 27 seconds by eight tenths over Matt Adams. Nicholas Mateo will take third position then and will improve by a couple of points. Mikel Garda will be fourth through all of that. But what an incredible race it was. They were fighting all the way through. Guillaume Levesque, by the way, by uh, finishing in that position six. Actually ties with Botafur for the hardest charger in that race. In fact, Jack Harrison's going to take that plus 10, sorry. So my apologies there. Jack Harrison will be your hard charger. And what an incredible end to an incredible race, Peter. I, I've never seen anything like that towards the end. That was a, I have everything to throw at for this victory. It makes no sense to me, I must be honest. Um, uh, Elvis is such a fast driver and normally very, very smart, but uh, that was not smart. Uh, he did not need to try that. Um, second place would have put him in a really strong position to claim second place. Let's get another look at it. I mean, Jake, where do we begin? Where do you begin is absolutely the right wording for it. You can see Elvis Rankin has just gone. I need to go through. He's trying to get out of it, though. You can see with the way that he's sliding that for. He is trying to get out of that move. It is not on. By the time he realizes it, he's in the side of him. And both cars, you can see, heavy damages there. The entire left side is there. And that's no good at all. We're going to get ourselves, though, away from just one moment here with the Skip Barber Formula iRacing Series. We'll be back with more after this. This is the world's premier online racing simulation. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat from your home computer with the most realistic online motorsports experience you'll find anywhere. Race virtually in the world's biggest events with officially licensed series, cars, and tracks. From the high banks of Daytona to the blistering speeds of Indianapolis, the dirt of Eldora to the world's most legendary road courses. It's all here, and with more than 180,000 people just like you already driving, you'll always have someone to race. Ready to get behind the wheel? Sign up at iRacing.com to get started.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to what was an incredible end to race number one. Jake Sperry, Peter Mackay here, and this is all about high drama. We talked about drivers needing to score points and to score results to get themselves here in this scenario up to the very top. And Peter, Deegan Fairclough is halfway through. He knows now he has just got to score the points he needs to, but Matteo finishing third will be his only concern to book himself one race this season. Yeah, it's still still work to do for Dagan Fairclough, but in a in a funny way, I think that result for Dagan Fairclough over if you take his whole season into account, I think he's justified. It. You know, it, it, you know, Mikko Gada and uh, particularly Elvis Rankin, they created that opportunity in this case. But Dagan has had so many great charges through the field all through the season. I actually really think he deserved that uh, that chance and and to get that victory. Let's see what he can do in race two from pole position. Absolutely, and with that opportunity to do that, he will fly forward and try and run away the best he can in that next race. But here is the track. Here is the opportunities, Peter, to try and get things done. Now, the keys that we saw in that race is that you've got a number of overtaking opportunities. Of course, you've got the run into Sunset and the run into One. They're effectively coupled together, but it's the run up into Cunningham and the run up towards uh, Gendebien, which I think are the interesting ones. Yeah, they are. I mean, that's the thing is you would think if you looked at this map on uh, on the screen here and you look at the elevation, which is virtually nothing uh, because it's an airfield, you don't want much elevation on, a, on an airfield. Uh, it looks very simple, but Sebring is so nuanced. There's so much uh, there's so much character in the track and you have to know it so well. You need to know it like the Nord Cypher, but it's such a, it's a relatively short track compared to the Nord Cypher. It's just got so many little nuances and mastering it is so important. And you look at the drivers that have won here, you know, Tom Christensen's won the Sebring 12 hour six times, Alan McNish four times, Fangio won here, Sir Sterling Moss, Dan Gurney, AJ Foyt, Mario Andretti. I mean, Steve McQueen raced here as well. Steve McQueen won his class here in 1970, nearly winning the race all outright with uh, Peter Revson. So you could, well, there have been books written uh, about Sebring and for good reason. Absolutely, and for great reason we have seen just how important it is to get a good start. It can be very congested, especially we saw that in the midfield of that race as we went through pizza so how do we put ourselves in a position if you're driving in the middle of the pack to make sure that you're staying in contact with the car in front especially over these two races coming up 15 minutes each and this second race importantly you know this is the final race of the season there is nothing left to lose well that's the thing is that yes there there's it, for most of the drivers there is nothing left to lose um and for them it's just the best way to give themselves a chance to get a good result is to keep the car clean and to, to just be very careful and clever on when you plan your moves and when you take your moves let's see who masters it best absolutely so Deegan Fairclough then will have the pole position Matt Adams in second Nicholas Mateo there in third place Mikel Garda after all of that did manage to limp across the line in fourth John Bertifer will start fifth along with Guillaume Levesque in sixth position on the grid. You look back, you've got Ross Banfield and Jack Harrison there on row four. Matt Fusa from ninth and Matthew Zeiss from tenth. They will both have something to prove. Starting from 11th on the grid will be Felipe Cabrera Loyola alongside the number 11 of Tyler Campbell. On the seventh row of the grid, and what a surprise, on the inside of row seven, Elvis Rankin. He needs to have the perfect race here. Pierre Francesco Patricolo will start on the outside of row seven. Then it's Zach Holden and Jordan Johnson with Theodore Burns and Michael Yanni on row nine. Michael Yanni, not a good day so far, but let's see what he can do with the pace under that car. Simon Nabori will start from the back row of the grid alongside Michael Romanidis. Absolutely, and this is the most important time for these drivers. They get one final lap then around this Sebring circuit before 15 minutes begin as they go through. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can log yourself onto iRacing here after the culmination of racing here. If it's your first time on iRacing, you can get yourself a brand new subscription for 40% off. You can log on to iRacing.com today to start your I racing career and I'm pretty sure here at this stage Peter you can say if you haven't already this might be the closest thing you can get 
to the world of racing out there. And of course, for more information on the schedule and how to be a member, you can log on to skipbarber.com forward slash iRacing series to keep yourself up to date with what happens in regards to the Skip Barber Racing School and with iRacing. Well, a very quick anecdote to prove that. Today I've been at my home circuit, Knockhill Racing Circuit, here in Scotland, which is scanned to absolutely incredible detail on the iRacing platform. And a number of the competitors in the club racing paddock in Scotland have been spending their winter not in the garage, not polishing the car. They have got themselves simulators and they have been on the iRacing service tweaking their technique. And, well, all I'll say, uh, um, Jake, is we saw some lap records tumble today. Read into that what you wish. Absolutely, and you read into that, you understand just how important these races have been, will be, and you understand everyone's trying to make sure those laps go down. They're putting in as many minutes as they can. There is Elvis Rankin. He is all the way back in 13th position. He's got a lot of work to do in this final race. He knows that if he didn't improve today, Nicholas Mateo, if he wanted to go forward, needed second or better in both races it was third position in that last race for nicholas mateo mateo is going to be short in terms of picking second in the championship up so elvis Rankin, no matter what happens he's going to be okay but the race is going to be here between fairclough and mateo mateo needs a top two and at this stage if it's not a top two for nicholas mateo it is effectively for deegan fairclough First, second, or third. That is what he would need to take third position away from him. Well, let's see who's going to come out on top in that battle. I mean, I think Elvis Franken will be breathing the huge sigh of relief. The hard work done early on in the season being enough to solidify his position in second. Perhaps he knew that. Perhaps his spotter said, yeah, go for it. You're clear. You're fine. And uh, maybe that's why he went for it. But, uh, God, a breath. <laughs> Big sigh of relief in the ranking camp, I'd imagine. But yeah, Faircloth versus Matteo, let's see it. Faircloth will be, I'm sure, will be really buoyed and confident by that race one victory. Can you do the double? That would be cool. It would be absolutely what he wants, especially with his drops. He was on 209 points with the drops coming into today's racing, and he was down a full 20 plus points on Nicholas Matteo, who he was trying to reach, and he may have just got himself into a really, really good opportunity where he makes that happen. But this is the toughest place here when it comes to Sebring. Being on the front and having to dictate tempo here today. Mikel Garda in fourth position. He would like to spoil the party. He would feel like his first race was robbed and taken away from him. But as they check up, look how wide they're going to go through Sunset Bend and look to try and get things sorted. Fairclough's gone very early as the pace car dives into the pits. And we're going to get ourselves back to racing. Green flag. And we're underway. Mateo has already lost a place there. Mikel Garda sneaks through on that inside line. And look at them fanning all the way out to the wall trying to get themselves a run in towards turn number one a bit of two wide and three wide as they try and shuffle on through everyone making it through okay a little bit of shuffling as the track narrows down in towards Christensen corner looks like we're all just about clean as we go through three fascinating race start there digging Fairclough trying to get the the jump there but Matt Adams says I've seen that trick before pal and he gasses it up just as early and keeps with Dagan Fairclough as they head down towards turn seven and uh, Fairclough good first sector though as well as they head into the first big heavy braking zone of the lap but they've got the number one of the champion Mikel Gada right on their case oh, oh chaos. chaos now is that Rankin yes it is Rankin been involved in a big pile up there at turn seven yeah, Matthew Zeiss in it as well. I think Simon de Mori was in it too. And it just looked like everyone was jumping through. I think it was Tyler Campbell, actually, uh, that was the catalyst for all of that. We'll have a look at that in a little bit. But at the moment, look at this for second position. Matt Adams being hounded by Mikel Garda into the tower corner and just pushing a little bit wide on the exit. That might compromise the run down the Flying Fortress straight into Bishop Corner. It certainly has, yeah, and uh, that's given Matt Adams a little bit of breathing rooms. But Matt is such a cool customer, the Canadian. Uh, after when we asked him Watkins playing, how much? Oh, well, he won the race. He said that must have been so much preparation. He says, oh, "Not really. I just, I just did a little bit of practice, and I knew it was just going to be about the wheel to wheel racing, so it was fine." He's very, very relaxed, and uh, yeah, he won't, he won't be too phased by uh, Nico Gada being all over the back of him. But he will have to fight very hard to keep the Dane at bay for too long. The young man from 
Ross Kilda in Denmark here has been so impressive all season. Here he goes, he's having a look up the inside at Sunset Bend. Does he come out the other side? It looks like he does. He's just <laughs> holding that narrow line. He's going to get enough, but he's not got the overlap clear. So down the front stretch and over the stripe they go. It's going to be a case of Matt Adams with the inside into turn one and turn three. He gets himself through and they're side by side behind as well. Oh, look at Garda go. He's going to be out there in the grass. He's got to try and save it there. And he keeps the car control. That is a pass, pass in the grass. The grass. <laughs> you better snap. Yeah, that was a Kevin Estra pass on the grass. But, I mean, even Kevin only had two wheels on the grass. That was all four wheels on the grass and still got the pass done. Now, I wonder, will Garda be assigned with a slowdown penalty for that? Doesn't look like it. I'm not sure if a slowdown penalty has ever been... We've ever seen that, an overtake on the grass around the outside of Turn 1 at Sebring. Incredible. Well, they make something new every day and how they all try and fight. Look how close they are all getting in. Three wide almost just in front as they dive in towards that hotel hairpin and look to try and go through. That's Patrick Colo trying to recover his race. He's got to deal through and gets a little bit of something there with uh, Matt Booster there who was trying to go through. It's all going on around here in the mid-pack as well. He's got a bit of two wide in front of this little group as well. And that's just trying to sort itself out. You can see it there. Those two cars were there. Janny and Co. were trying to fight, but it's still going on. And now it's for fourth position on at the moment because Guillaume Levesque has got Matteo, Bertifer, Banfield and Harrison all there. As things stand where Matteo is here though, Peter, it's going to be third place in the championship for Deegan Fairclough. Yeah, and that's a really, really, really important there to get that one-off show in the, the Skip Barber series. And uh, who knows what that can lead to if you have a good good performance, it can snowball from there. But I have to say, what a debut. It's such a pity that the debut is in the final round of the six-round six race, series. Uh, Guillaume Levesque, the man from Quebec, uh, doing a super job in fourth place. A great fit run to sixth in, uh, in race one and now in fourth. Really impressive really impressive we just had a change to the lead as well as Mikel Garda has gone around the outside at Sunset Bend to get it done but let's take a little look at what happened then this is going to be a very tough position so there's the first hit goes into Tyler Campbell and Campbell is effectively a missile at that point he cannot stop the car in any way shape or form going into the hairpin who was that we were riding on board with really kind of clumsy on the brakes there it had to be said uh, I don't know, but that was that Patrick was... Colo, the number seven car. Yeah, yeah it would be. Patrick Colo. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's that's not ideal at all. And in terms of that scenario, you're just hoping at that point that it just doesn't snowball. And that was probably the biggest snowball that we've seen. Here are your leading three at the moment. Garda with the race lead at this point in time. Deegan Fairclough in second position. Matt Adams finds himself in third right now and he is trying to do his level best to close that gap down to the front two they've already pulled out a gap of about two seconds to the group behind which is Levesque, Matteo, Botafur and Banfield so they are certainly doing enough and we saw how in the opening race you build a gap it's going to be very difficult to close that back down again yeah with nine minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock it's about two minutes for a lap now at the moment Mikel Gada is about two seconds quicker than Guillaume Levesque. Why is that significant? Because Guillaume Levesque is the kind of locomotive. He is the leader of the second group. He's in fourth place. But if he's lapping two seconds a lap closer, you really, if you're Degan Fairclough or Matt Adams, you this is not the time to make an overtaking maneuver. You just need to stay with our leader, uh, Mikel Gada, and, uh, and let him drag you away into relative safety as well. Trying to beat the Dane for, uh, well, if you're there at the last lap, why not have a try? Oh, <laughs> Faircloth thought he was going to have a go there as well, but they've got to play smart here. Break away from that second group, then see if they're in a position to fight at the checkered flag. Yeah, absolutely, and we're going to jump back a little bit as well because it's absolutely everywhere that you've got this amazing racing. Look at this. This is Jordan Johnson, and he's got everyone absolutely there racing in virtual reality as he tries to go in towards turn one on that inside then going through. That's Matt Busa making the pass, but he'll go a little bit deep here. That will allow Johnson the chance to go back through. Elvis Rankin in this group as well, just behind, and they'll fight too wide. 
through three, four, and five, and just about gets it done. Great move from Jordan Johnson, and he really benefited there, did Jordan Johnson, from his spotter in his ears, Athena Leclerc, just giving uh, him all the information he needed. Interesting, that's the benefit as well of the virtual reality headset. You can turn your head and look across to see where your, your wheels are as well. But here comes Elvis Rankin up the inside. A big lunge and oh, just gets it all. Oh, a little, little twitch and a wiggle there for Matt Busa. And that allows Rankin the opportunity to get the move sealed up for good. As uh, Patrick Colo, uh, he's going to have another look now at Busa around the outside into Cunningham Corner. But Busa too good on the brakes there as well. And Elvis Rankin, well, it just shows you if you make a mistake in race one, my goodness me, do you pay for it because then your grid position for race two puts you in the mid pack. And well, that bit Elvis Rankin, he was a victim of that incident on lap one. And would you also say with Matt Busa really struggling on this lap after being so aggressive trying to go through the opening corners, it's the sort of track here at Sebring where if you're not attacking, you're defending, and it's being proven right now through Gendebien contact. Busa involved, so too Theodore Burns, so too Patricolo. Yeah, another incident for Patricolo there. Um, not many straight panels on that car. Seven minutes to go, eight minutes down so far. So, Mikel Gada leads Degan Fairclough, who has not let the Danish ace get away, and neither has Matt Adams, actually. Matt Adams is still well in the slipstream range of Degan Fairclough as well. So, what do Fairclough and Adams have up their sleeve? Do Are they hiding anything? Are they saving themselves for a last lap dice? We shall see. You've got to think that Gada, he will be, well, once bitten, twice shy. Those last lap battles, he'll be ready for it. Absolutely, he will. There is Jean Bertifer on the back of this group in fourth, fifth, and sixth positions. Riding through now and out towards the gurney bend. They'll be coming along. He's just sat on the back. He has to be patient here, but they are starting to run out of laps. And this is where you'd say with three laps to go, two laps to go, he's starting to think about putting yourself in the best position to go out there and make those passes. Whoa, look at John Bodefour there just uh, getting up a little bit, taking a little bit too much curb. And you actually heard the bottom of the car bottom out over the curb, a horrible kind of crunching noise. So well, you don't want to do that too many times because you can risk damaging the underside of the car and therefore reducing your aerodynamic performance as well. So, well, I put it for I won't want to do that too often. But uh, Gara's still controlling it at the front with Levesque again continuing his really impressive uh, debut here in the series. He's in fourth. Matteo there in the middle in the green car. He's fifth. Now, Matteo, he... He needs to get now. There's a question, Jake. Is fourth good enough to usurp David Fairclough, or uh, does Matteo need to get by Fairclough to Nick's uh, third place? It, it means no difference right now for Nicholas okay. Matteo. He knows that to improve on his points haul. He needs a third place, and he's not going to reach that right now with how the drops work. For Deegan Fairclough, as things stand, he's 13 points back. The points he would gain from second position right now is 13 points. He would win on count back because he has two wins to one. Look at the move there from the number 20, John Butterfer, going to the outside, trying to get this around the outside of Matteo, who is embroiled in this big fight for best of the rest in fourth position and they're all going to close up on Guillaume Levesque and there's going to be some bump drafting here Levesque being pushed down the straight by Bertifer yeah so Guillaume Levesque uh, well did he get enough pace or was it Matteo who got the good running Matteo looked like he got a very good run around the sunset trying to go around the outside and oh just can't get it done as oh as the number 20 as Jean Budafort throws the big block on the exit of turn one and Matteo actually has to back out of it a little bit but meanwhile Guillaume Levesque what a defensive drive this has been from the Quebecois driver. And he's hugging that inside line. He's saying, you're going to have to go the long way around, John. If you want this fourth position, you're going to have to try for it. So right on board with the number six, Jack Harrison. Currently seventh, but he that could improve quite quickly with the sixth, fifth and fourth battling away in front of him. Absolutely. And behind him, he's bringing Ross Banfield to the ride. So it's going to be a five car scrap for fourth position. He sees that defensive line from Guillaume Levesque who is just trying to prove what he's capable of this is his first start of the season as he goes through and he's holding back one John Bertifer one Nicolas Matteo and they are proving just what they need to do you can see the smile on his face there as he was going through up in towards the tower corner he sees the group and he's like you can't make this up how much they're defending 
Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's smiling. I don't know because A, he's having fun probably, but B, because he's, uh, it's, it's the, the group is really coming back to Jack Harrison and uh, Guillaume Levesque, he's, he is the cork in the bottle, but as long as you stay the cork in the bottle, that's fine. So, I mean, but Jack, uh, Jack Harrison, he wants that bottle to be shaken vigorously so the cork comes flying out. Absolutely, and they've got two laps to figure it out as well. Here comes the little search again. Look how close he gets alongside as car 20, John Butterford, trying to go to the outside again here at Sunset Bend to try and get this move for fourth position. And once more around the outside, he just has enough to give himself the lane. They go too wide, too deep down the front stretch now as Mateo has to defend from Harrison. But you can see it's the inside line given then for Jean Butterfoot and he finally gets it done but look at Levesque he's going to come back up underneath and I tell you what that is a student of the game style move that's <laughs> so clever so so clever there from Guillaume Levesque it looked like he was throwing the dummy saying oh okay I give up you, you win nah no chance goes with a big wide entry and, oh mistake there for Butterfoot and that's given Levesque a critical little bit of advantage there now here comes Matteo in the green halo car and then it's going to be Harrison going to make it three wide maybe down into the hairpin oh they all try and break in there oh Harrison goes wide Matteo gets a bump from the back from Budafor meanwhile Levesque goes well au revoir absolutely as easy as you want I think Harrison scared himself through the corner there and uh, just tried to do a little bit too much and as such he's now dropping into a battle with Ross Banfield as they look at how much they squirrel around and this is what makes this a very difficult circuit actually to set up for here Peter is the fact that it is an incredibly bumpy circuit oh it's it's a it's a nightmare to to get a car set up for here whether it's a single seater or a sports car I do believe that for the sports cars that you'd need a much higher ride height than normal basic because of the suspension travel required for the bumps I would suspect it's similar for a single seater but of course you increase that ride height it, it does not help the handling characteristic of the car you want it slammed to the ground but with the bumps the way they are here at Sebring that's just not possible but Guillaume Levesque not only has he had speed he's had fantastic defensive capabilities here in that number 8 car but here comes Budafor he's got a run now on the number 10 of Matteo they go side by side into sunset who's going to come out on top well again on the outside it's taken about 5 different attempts for Matteo to get the car planted through the corner Banfield right up underneath him trying to find that pass and we are now on the final lap of the season here at Sebring another little look from Nicholas Matteo, he knows all these moves, he's trying to get as much as he can, but he will not improve on his point score. Deegan Fairclough at the moment by countback will be moving into third position. They will be on the same amount of points come the end of the season right now. They charge through turn number five, and Matteo right now knows that he's just got to find something, anything, hope that they fight with the front three. Let's see what happens. We saw it in race one. It can change very quickly, even right up to the final corner as well. As uh, Levesque again has Budafor filling his mirrors left and right. And Matteo, you know that Nicholas Matteo is going to try everything he can. He is now or never really do or die for uh, the not driver of the green number 10 car there. But at the front is Mikel Gada. He's got an eight tenths of a second advantage over Dagan Fairclough. So is Fairclough close enough to make a move? Oh, it's going to be tight going to need doesn't a couple need of qualifying sectors no he doesn't need to oh correct. back end oh what a slide from Deegan Fairclough oh my goodness me he is still driving hoping he can get a victory out of it can number 19 but it just shows you the level there's the calm and composure of Mikel Garda though and this has been the calm and composure that has got him to the championship that has got him to a full drive this season and Deegan's in the wall Deegan's in the wall Oh my goodness, Deegan Fairclough's in the wall! In the final lap of this race, Deegan Fairclough is out! And Matteo will be in P3! You cannot write this! Here and there he was for only a moment. Oh my goodness, we'll have to look back after this. But this has been the personification of what makes Mikel Garda such a great driver. He meticulously got through. It's his sixth win of the season. And this is how you crown a championship. This is how you crown a champion. He has done it in style. And uh, Mikel Garda, well, he plays the... Oh, oh, huge wreck up behind. Now, who was that? Was that... Le no. Harrison. Harrison. Oh, oh. 
And what that means is that on debut, Guillaume Levesque is a podium finisher here in the Skip Barber Racing School. Amazing. This series has everything. It has had everything. It will have everything. And it has been incredible. Mikel Garda picks up the victory. 16 minutes, 17 seconds. He'll take it ahead of Matt Adams and Guillaume Levesque, the two Canadians, second and third. John Butterfield will finish fourth. And with that fifth place finish for Nicolas Matteo, with the issue on the final lap of the race, for one Deegan Fairclough, it means Matteo gets a drive for one race in the Skip Barber Racing Series. Incredible as they go through. It's Banfield 6th, Janny 7th, Elvis Rankin already confirmed second position. He's in 8th place. Jordan Johnson finishes ninth, and Michael Romanidis will round out the top 10. You can look down the rest of the results here. And that, for Deegan Fairclough, those sorts of mistakes, Peter, they either haunt you or you grow stronger from them. Yeah, and it's got to be the latter. You have to find a way to make it the latter. Oh, poor old Dagan Fairclough. I mean, uh, yeah, you, your heart goes out to him. He's been such a such a fighter all season long. And yeah, that, that will hurt for a, for a couple of days, I would imagine. It certainly would. But here is Mikel Garda along with us, champion here of this Skip Barber Formula I racing series. And Mikel, six race victories this season. Uh, it looked like in that final race, it was all about just com or calmly just making your way through the field. How incredible is it for you to know that you've got an entire drive for 2022? I mean, it's it's amazing, to be honest. I, real, I mean, I'm really gra grateful to, to have this season. I'm and I look so much forward to come over there and, and see if I can race fast in a real car. I mean, I think I can, but I I, I don't know. I've only raced karts uh, in the past, so so yeah, I'm really happy. Talk about those battles through the season because it wasn't play, as plain sailing as six victories would have you think. Of course, you had Elvis Rankin along for the ride. Nicholas Mateo was aggressive out there. Deegan Fairclough here today in the race really pushed you. So in terms of how this season's been, just how important of a learning curve has it been for you battling with such great competitors? It's been it's been a really good uh, season for me. I mean, I'm really happy with the season. I've never driven Formula cars uh, before this, so I've, I'm mainly in the GT and, and Porsche Cup cars. So it's been really fun to, to learn these cars and, and battle against all these amazing people. They're really experienced and, and yeah, I've really learned much this season. Well, you've learned so much. We've seen you uh, jump along leaps and bounds. But Mikael, one final thing. Um, uh, it could have been two victories today. You get the one. And just how important has it been just to settle down the end of the season with effectively a commanding drive like that here tonight? I mean, I, I wanted a win here. I mean, I didn't need it, but I really like Sebring. And I think my pace was really good today. And this is one of my favorite tracks. So, so it's the perfect way to to end the season well there you have it Mikel Garda then is your 2022 champion here with the Skip Barber race series the Formula I racing series and Peter just what an incredible season this has been it has had highs and lows thrills and spills it's had pretty much everything you could want condensed into six weeks of incredible racing action it has, and I have to say it's been a privilege uh, to be involved in this series. Uh, what an amazing initiative to give a young, talented driver in uh, in Mikel Gada the opportunity to go and show what he's worth. You know, he's never even driven, he hadn't really driven single-seater cars on iRacing, let alone in the real world, just has gardening experience. And that is what this initiative, that's what this program was all about, Skip Barber Racing School with iRacing. And I cannot wait to watch and see how Mikkel gets on because he's been so impressive in this series and that is what sim racing is about nowadays is creating that opportunities for drivers to succeed in the virtual world but also to give that platform to get that route it, getting the route into motor racing is so difficult now that giving this opportunity to these drivers is just fantastic and it has been a real privilege to be involved and to watch them to compete We've seen it time and time again with many drivers who've been jumping forward in all sorts of categories, putting themselves into the best position that they could. This has been one of the biggest prize pools combined 
in sim racing history of half a million US dollars. And it is a full seat for the season for that driver there, Mikel Garda, who did everything right. Half a season will go to Elvis Rankin. One race for Nicolas Mateo, but it has been an incredible 2022. That is what racing is supposed to be. It was hard fought for, but you saw class just ooze out of driver number one. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you very soon.